This is the second part dedicated to simulating the Intel 8008 CPU. If you haven't watched the first part, then please pause and watch the first part first. Uh, now, if uh, you are already familiar with the 8008 uh, CPU architecture that I described in the first part, then let's take a look at how this is implemented uh, in a Java simulation. I also previously created videos about simulating uh, Intel uh, 4004 CPU and uh, the Intel uh, 4040 CPU. So uh, you may also take a look at that uh, after seeing this video as uh, maybe there are uh, some more details explained better in those videos. The three simulations, uh, including this one for the 8008 CPU, uh, are uh, rather similar in that uh, we have uh, the Java System Simulator project that's available on GitHub. Uh, I'm using uh, uh, this uh, class, Intel 8008, which implements uh, several uh, interfaces like CPU device and then I am uh, actually implementing the different uh, methods uh, used to simulate the CPU. Uh, in this first part I'm uh, just declaring uh, internal uh, variables uh, like uh, flags, uh, the internal uh, address stack uh, the 8008 uh, CPU has an internal stack, uh, the first level, uh, well actually the level indicated by the stack pointer is the program counter. It also has a number of uh, registers, I'm also defining here uh, some uh, static final variables, uh, well constants actually which are being used to access uh, the indicated register in this uh, REX array and uh, the flags. Uh, the 8008 CPU uh, only has these uh, four flags uh, 0, carry, parity and sign. Uh, these are being set by the different uh, arithmetic operations and are uh, used especially in uh, conditional jumps. Uh, we also have a uh, HALT flag. Uh, this is uh, used to check if the CPU is in the HALT state or not. Uh, because uh, there are instructions using uh, parity computation, I'm uh, presetting this uh, in a parity map so uh, for any value uh, between uh, 0 and uh, 255 inclusive uh, I'm uh, setting in the parity map array uh, the corresponding value that should be stored in this uh, parity flag so this makes the computation a bit uh, quicker uh, also, uh, with uh, regard to the initialization of the CPU, uh, the CPU starts with uh, all registers set to zero, uh, but uh, very important, the CPU starts in the halt state. So this is something uh, very different from uh, today's CPUs and also from uh, 4004 and 4040. Uh, because normally the CPU uh, starts uh, in a running state uh, with uh, the program counter initialized at a certain address. Uh, however, here uh, the CPU starts in the halt state and it can be uh, brought out of the halt state by uh, means of an interrupt signal. Uh, now in the step method uh, we are actually implementing the simulation. Uh, as you can see I'm first checking to see if uh, there is an interrupt signal uh, and 
if there is no interrupt signal, I'm checking if uh, the CPU is in the halt state. So if it is in the halt state and there is no interrupt signal, then nothing happens. Otherwise, if uh, there is an interrupt signal, uh, the um, uh, CPU will uh, execute a special uh, instruction that is provided by external logic uh, during the activation of the interrupt signal. So in reality what happens is that uh, on the data bus uh, is placed an instruction that is not uh, usually found in memory in uh, some particular cases it may be actually in uh, some memory location but <coughs> uh, the CPU simply expects that if uh, the interrupt uh, uh, signal is set then it will read a special instruction to be executed uh, during the interrupt handling and this special instruction is usually a jump to an interrupt service uh, routine that is uh, present in uh, program memory. Uh, however, for uh, simulation purposes, uh, instead of uh, hijacking the address and data bus, uh, I am using uh, signal data uh, attached uh, on the control bus. Uh, I've already made a video about simulating a control bus, so you should probably watch that one as well. But uh, very quickly, uh, I'm going uh, to this uh, interface. Uh, so it's uh, possible to set a signal, but also uh, some data, uh, which is just an array of bytes. And uh, this is set uh, associated with uh, the signal. So. Uh, here, uh, if I go back to this uh, step uh, method, uh, I'm checking if uh, the interrupt signal is set, and if so, I'm retrieving the associated signal data. Again, uh, according to the CPU documentation, this is uh, just forced onto the data bus. So, from this point of view, the simulation does the same thing, is forcing an uh, instruction uh, to be executed with the interrupt uh, signal. Uh, in case uh, the CPU is not halted and if there wasn't an uh, uh, interrupt, uh, then it will simply read uh, from the current uh, uh, program counter location uh, the next instruction. Uh, again, I remind you that the current program counter is saved uh, on an address stack and uh, the stack pointer indicates uh, which level of this stack is the actual uh, program counter. Uh, okay, now uh, the address, uh, the instruction is uh, uh, checked. We have this uh, switch here which uh, checks uh, to see uh, what type of instruction we are uh, executing. Uh, this is uh, something that must be observed together with uh, the CPU uh, data sheet where you have the various instructions or the uh, assembly programming manual uh, where you can see the definitions for uh, each of these instructions also included here uh, several comments. Uh, so the instructions are usually uh, separated into, into these uh, three parts. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, this first part, then second part and third part. So uh, in this case, I'm uh, first checking the first part, we have zero, zero, then I'm checking the third part and then here uh, the middle part. So in case they are all zero, so the opcode is zero, we have a HALT instruction, which obviously only sets the HALT flag. Uh, but of course we can have uh, additional instructions and in some cases uh, there is no opcode defined. So 
Uh, in this case, the simulation will throw a CPU invalid opcode exception with uh, the instruction. And uh, it's up to the uh, overall simulation to determine what to do in this case. Uh, the simulation may decide to simply ignore the exception and continue. Uh, or it may stop the simulation or may ask the user or anything else. Okay, so uh, this entire code is a series of uh, switch case uh, operations. Uh, for each uh, operation, uh, there is a very simple uh, Java implementation which uh, handles the data manipulation and uh, the flag uh, setting. Uh, as a remark, not all the operations affect the flags. So you can see here we have an operation that uh, does not change any of the flags. Well, here we have an operation that uh, updates uh, the carry flag. And there may be uh, other operations that affect uh, other flags as well. Uh, you can see here this uh, add operation uh, that uh, affects multiple flags. So in this case, we have a carry flag, parity flag. As I mentioned previously, uh, setting of the parity flag is done by uh, having the parity map that is pre-computed at initialization time. And uh, we have here also setting of the sign flag. And uh, this is pretty much uh, the entire implementation. Uh, one thing to notice is that from uh, previous uh, CPU implementations, this uh, implementation got a bit larger, but not by too much. And the overall idea is the same between the 4004, 4040, and 8008 implementations. Uh, you simply read uh, the next instruction, then you have a series of uh, switch case uh, to identify the operation being performed. Uh, some operations may have uh, parameters. You simply extract these uh, from the bytes associated with the operation. You perform the operation, which is usually uh, very easily implemented in Java. There are usually just a couple of lines of code. And finally, after the operation, you update uh, the necessary flags. Uh, and keep in mind that not all the operations are actually uh, updating all the flags. Some operations may uh, run without updating any flag. Uh, some operations may update one flag. Some operations may update all the flags. So uh, you really need to uh, implement uh, each operation by reading the uh, data sheet and the programmer's manual. Uh, not all the operations are detailed uh, in the data sheet. So, uh, for this purpose, you must uh, go through the assembly language programming manual, which uh, clearly identifies what's happening uh, for each of the operations. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave uh, any comments and uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.